Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Untitled Reviews. This being a show, we're talking about TV shows that are dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about The Bear, Season 2, Episode 4. A lot of really interesting things were done in this episode, so let's break it down. So I'm really liking this trend. I'm assuming it's going to be, the rest of the season is going to be kind of like this too, where episodes are going to be mainly dedicated to one uh, character. Last episode was mainly a Sid episode. This episode being mainly a Marcus episode as he's in Copenhagen. You know, going off. I, the way he kind of talked about it, I mean, it does seem like it is his first time, like, really leaving the country. And, obviously, it comes with its complications. I get he's excited for the adventure, but it also means leaving his mom behind. He even opened up the Sid where he was like, yo, I had this nightmare over and over again that, like, when I'm asleep, I wake up and, like, Christy, uh, the person who's looking after, one of the people looking after his mom, um basically has to break the news to him that his mom died and then he wakes up and then everything's okay but it's just he's he's that worried because i guess he just and since i guess since her diagnosis and since her getting sick he's never really left her side he's always been you know relatively close enough so i guess hope like kind of considering what we kind of learned about markets this episode it doesn't seem like he was the oh i'm gonna travel the world i was just like yo i got a job i did whatever i could to whatever he could get to kind of pay the bills because i know at one point I can't remember what the job was. There was a job he worked for like five years. And then another one was like he worked at McDonald's for a couple years. In fact, before he started working at The Beef, he ended up working at McDonald's. It's actually like he ran into Mike and he was like, yo, Mike was tight, but also like crazy as hell. And he wanted to open a bakery. And so I took the time to learn how to bake bread and stuff like that. And that's that's how he fell into this. Because he's only been doing this chef thing for like uh like the bakery like side of things obviously he's like kind of expanded more over the course of this series but he's only been doing this like a year and a half like so that that was really interesting i, I should also talk about the time skip i was kind of uh thrown off by i'm watching it's such a gap between some of these episodes because i'm getting like sidetracked with so much other stuff but i can't remember if it was episode two or three where they were like oh yeah 12 weeks away i want to say it was the last episode but it might have actually been episode two and it's just blurring together but it's like one or two episodes later, and we're already five weeks, like, down. Like, they, they're already, they're only seven weeks away now, so, um, little, like, two and a half months, basically, um, until, like, opening, so, obviously, things have not panned out. They, I love the opening notes and the stuff you see on the walls, and it's just kind of like, hey, like, don't use the credit card, this is overdue, um... And I, the breakdown at the beginning where, like, uh, Natalie's like, yeah, you're basically going to have to pay a fee because, for one, you have to go through all this stuff because you're changing the name. But it's like, well, why does that matter? It's like, well, when Mikey was running the beef, he technically never ran it legitimately as a business. So now you not only have to pay as, like, the bear, but you also have to make up for the fact is that you are operating as beef without being officially beat the beef while you're... So that it's such a... It's like it's a money thing. And Natalie's like, yes, Carmen, it's Carmi, it's another money thing. So, and... Because, yeah, it's been a couple more weeks, and I guess she's still, like, ha I, or at the very least, she probably wears stuff. To, I mean, I guess it varies from person to person, because some people don't really show too much when they're pregnant. I was like, oh, they still don't know. If, it's been a couple weeks. But I guess it's like, maybe she's just one of those people that doesn't show. I mean, because we also don't know how, like, how far along in a pregnancy she was, like, when she, we, as the audience, found out she was pregnant. That was, that was, like, episode two. We don't know how far along she was at that point, so another couple weeks might put her at, like, a month. That might not be enough time to show, for all we know. Well, like probably like a month near almost a month and a half or something. So we don't know how far along that is that maybe she doesn't show yet or maybe she's just wearing kind of like bigger clothes to kind of cover it up. But she honestly didn't want anyone to know. But she's like, all right, this is going to be a great thing. You can see Carmen looking down at her because he could tell by the speech. Like, oh, are you about to tell me you're pregnant? And just as she's like, I don't want anyone to know, especially Richie, the wall falls down and it's like, I'm pregnant. And everyone's like, oh, congratulations. And Richie, I knew it. And I love back being like nat the wall came down she's like yes yes honey yes i, I could see that sweetheart um that's kind of all the time we really i mean we get we cut back a little bit with richie and fact like messing like trying to because it was like right they were going to get the fire suppression stuff checked and it's like they're trying to see like okay if this balloon pops it's not it's not looking good for us and it's like richie's like it's not going to pop and um back is like it's going to pop it's going to pop it popped it popped and marcus is like okay on the other side of the line so i did like his conversation with sid i am it i don't know if i i don't think i've brought this up it definitely seems like there might be a him and sid 
thing, but I don't know if, like, she feels that way, and I think he's kind of a little nervous to probably, like, poke the bear on that, because he's like, right, she's a good friend, and I don't want to blow that up by, like, because once you kind of, like, kind of take that step forward, it can destroy a friendship where you're like, uh, this is weird and awkward around this now, and you probably don't want to mess up a good thing, because she's a really good thing in his life, a good friend, so... Because it's just that moment where she was like, oh, I miss you. And he paused for a couple seconds. He was like, I miss you too. So it's like, yeah. I mean, he definitely likes her. Just the question is, does she like him back? And even if she did, like her focus right now, and it probably go, it probably, that storyline will probably coincide with what Carmen told her. Like, you want a star? That's kind of got to be your everything. You got to put everything towards it. So she's working towards that So she, and making sure like the bear gets built up to what it is. So she's probably not really thinking about relationships, you know, so... I mean, I think her and Carmen might be kind of in the same boat. To be fair, Carmen's probably letting a little bit of that slip when it comes to Claire. But maybe him and... Uh, and I think that might be the interesting result, seeing like... I don't think it's going to work out for Carmen and Claire in the end. I think that's just not going to work out. But maybe for like different reasons that maybe a market... Maybe similar but different outcomes for like maybe a... Uh, Sid and Marcus situation. That That's just pure speculation on my part. Um, I also really like the, um, really quick, cause I just thought that was such an interesting thing where it's like, someone's like, yeah, leave some water for Coco. And, uh, which is so interesting cause uh, I won't go into it, go, go into it. But it's like, and I love, he's like, maybe there actually isn't a cat. It's like, yeah, I never saw it in the entire episode. And I guess like either it got out and no one was aware or that was just there to mess with you in some shape or form. I don't know. What was interesting, though, was the kitchen he's working at. Like, when he walked in, he was like, oh, my name is Marcus. I was like, is that Will Poulter? I was like, that's so why." I mean, obviously, I knew. It's like, it's like, oh, yeah, my name's Luca. But I'm like, that's, I don't know why that caught me off guard. I was like, Will Poulter? Okay. I don't know why, like, that casting kind of, I mean, it's honestly, it's kind of like John Barenthal when he was like, him as Mike kind of threw me from, I was like, John Barenthal, what the fuck? It's kind of got that same thing. It's also interesting because I think this might be the first thing I've seen him in. I swear there was something he... I was about to say, this is the first thing I've ever seen with him doing his natural accent, I think. of the like I haven't seen everything he's ever been in. I've seen very limited things he's been in. But I know, like, in Maze Runner, he does his Ameri does an American accent. Where the Millers uh, does an American accent. I've not seen Guardians of the Galaxy 3 yet, so I don't know if, if he does an accent as um, Adam Warlock or not. Because the only time I've ever heard his natural accent or in, is in inter, uh, in interviews. So that was just, uh, but it's just like interesting. Um, it's so interesting too because like I think because of the high stress nature of what a chef is, I always expect him to kind of be like crazy. Like Carmen can get crazy sometimes, but a lot of times he's so like like low energy, like kind of even killed her. Like okay, like I'm absorbing the situation, I'm taking it all in. So that's kind of like the like vibe I got from Luca, and I was like, oh, I could, like especially when Marcus was messing up, he wasn't screaming at his face, like, blah blah blah, because it's like it's not an official kitchen where like I'm training you, like that's why I guess it's like I'm not gonna be an asshole about it. I'm just gonna like okay, that's wrong. Okay, that's worse. That's that's as much as it got. I don't know if that was. I was about to say like I don't know if just kind of like that's the 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 British nature you know, of the character, or whether it's just kind of like, no, that's just, like, like I say, I have my preconceived notion, because we got it in season one with, um, the kitchen that Carmen worked at, like, a year before, um, he, you know, started working at, beef, you know, took over beef and stuff, um, it was, uh, the chef that was screaming at Carmen, uh, Played by Joe McHale. I, I'm also going to tell you I had to edit that out because I sat here for like a minute because I could not remember Joe McHale's name. I actually had to Google it. I was like, I wasn't going to, I wasn't just going to let that go. I was like, I know his name. I just, I'm blanking on it. So either way, it's just it, the energy he had, I thought was just so interesting. And just like the little things he was teaching Marcus, um, I just thought that was just kind of nice. And even, you know, measuring stuff and rolling stuff and they're talking and you know it's like oh you want to learn how uh, one point like, oh do you have you ever made ice cream before do you want to learn how to make ice cream it's like yes um and then they kind of learn about each other it's, it's our opportunity to learn a little bit about luca which i thought was so interesting where it's like oh do you have any siblings and he was like yeah a sister somewhere and i think marcus didn't really want to push it too much it's like right it's not my place but like that that seemed like that's a story in itself of like that hesitation and like saying she's somewhere so, 
I don't know what that like that that pause made me think like it's probably like maybe like a, a bad family falling out or something or maybe there's something a little more darker and morbid to that circumstance but like that like that pause and I think it was meant to insinuate something and that's why Marcus didn't really want to push when it came to it because we learned that and I especially loved Lucas' perspective and how he gave something gave Marcus something to think about because it's like right how'd you get so good it's like it's kind of like yeah, honestly just fucking up is kind of how you have to do it you kind of have to fuck up and learn from it and that's how you get better and for him it's like because he's like oh yeah I've been basically doing this cooking thing since I was basically a kid and he's just gotten better and better and he's like at the restaurants I worked I always was like the best of the best of like no matter where I worked until I went to this particular place and this guy I was like a guy who started the same day as me was better than me he was faster than me he was better than me and every way he was like better than better than me and i could never hope to keep up but for him he's like yeah but that actually there came some like there was almost epiphany with it where it's like okay now i've met the best i don't it takes the pressure off of me of trying to be the best all i have to do from now on is i know what the goal is look looks like this is what the best looks like so okay especially because it's like right you've been feeling yourself for so long you've been flexing thinking you're the best and then someone came here and sunned you and showed you you ain't you know, but now it's like, oh, I get to take a step back, breathe in. And yes, like I recognize no longer I'm the best. So I don't have to feel that pressure anymore. But I know what the best looks like. All I have to do is keep up with him. And I love the Scotty and Michael uh, parallel. And it's like, oh, who's Scotty Pippen? And it's like, uh, you know, you know, he was kind of like that. The Michael Jordan. Who's Michael Jordan? It's like, oh, you fucker. You know exactly. Yeah, we've heard of Michael Jordan in London. But it's like, yeah. So he's like, yeah, I guess I really am Scotty. I just thought that was such a dope thing where it's just kind of knowing like, oh, you have to you t- alleviate it some of that because there is that pressure to be faster, to be better. And it's like, because for him, it's like that goal of at least trying to keep up with that dude. He's like, oh, yeah, like I'm a thousand times better than I thought I, I could have even dreamed I'd become because of that. And he's also saying like, right, don't just get so focused in the kitchen. Like what your skills and everything. Everything can only take you so far here. You kind of have to take time out there as well because he was saying that it doesn't always like techniques and being able to do all this fancy shit kind of doesn't always amount to anything like when it comes to like preparing something like something that's good is just good no matter how you kind of went about. So it's just it was just kind of an interesting eye like opening circle because like the the cooking situation we've always only gotten like the chef side of things when it came to Carmen and Sid and to kind of get like a different perspective on it like we've never really heard Carmen and Sid really talk in the same manner Luca does it is that thing about it's probably like a fingerprint where like every chef there's similarities there's overlaps but every chef goes about things differently because they've all had different experiences they are different people how they go about things are different just probably like the whole Ibra and Tina how they've how they both take into the school situation. Eva's taking it one way, Tina's taking another. So it's like everyone varies from different person and background and circumstances. So just thought that was just kind of a neat element to the episode. I don't know. The episode also kind of fit Marcus's personality because Marcus is just so like, he's such a chill dude that the episode had a very like, Whereas, like, obviously there are anxiety moments, but I think that's the funny elements of, like, right, when you're focusing on Marcus in Copenhagen, like, everything's chill. Well, I say that, except for the guy that uh, he ran into who was, like, trapped under the fence, and he's trying to help the guy, and is able to help him, and the guy hugs him, and then, like, pats his head, and he's like, wait, are you are you really about to get back on a bike? And he just rides away. I was like, what the fuck was that? It's like, okay. I don't know if that'll ever turn into something later on, but maybe it's just kind of like a, yeah, shit happens. I, maybe that'll have some profound effect on Marcus. Maybe it's going to be like a funny story he tells later on in the season of like, oh yeah, this weird thing happened. It's like, yeah, maybe there's going to be some deeper meaning that either Marcus takes from it now or maybe later on, or at least someone extrapolates something completely different from it later on. Like I said, just it's just so interesting because like there's not as many like stressful moments. To be fair, he is away from the most stressful place right now and that's the restaurant. So we you know, once again, we caught up with fucking them, um, you know, so, and even Sid's like, nah, it's kind of okay that you're not here because it's like, right, you've already got enough going on. Once again, how, how can I be here without worrying about your, my mom? It's like, your mom's okay. A lot of people who care about her are looking after her. You, uh, can only take care of her if you're willing to take care of yourself. And, you know, cause she also talks about it. She was like, yeah, I, I know that feeling. Cause you know, she was fairly young when her mom died, but it's probably like a lot of what Marcus feels now. It's like, right, she was feeling back then. And even the aftermath of it, I, she probably remembers how that feeling went. And she probably still feels a lot of that even now, you know. 
all these years later. So I just thought that was just kind of an interesting thing. And like I said, I, I think that will lead to some connection between the two. I just, I hope it works out, but I get the feeling like it won't just because Sid's about her dreams and ambitions. Or maybe it's just a thing of, yo, there's that, but maybe it's also like, I don't want to mess up this friendship. You're like a bro to me. I can't look at you in that type of way. And we'll ultimately have to wait and see where everything ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. Until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.